In this video, I'm going to show you how you can derive the SUVAT equations, or the constant acceleration formulae, using calculus. Now, uh, some of the techniques I'm going to use um, are first year uh, techniques for integration, um, but then I'm going to go into some second year differential equations kind of level. So, um, just to kind of give you a heads up if some of the content here you haven't met yet. Okay, now the first thing that we're going to start off with is uh, to say, well, we know that the acceleration, A, is equal to the rate at which the velocity is changing with respect to time. So we can say that A is equal to dV by dt. Now, A here, because we're working with the constant acceleration formulae, A here is a constant. Okay, so it's like saying dV by dt equals 2 or dv by dt equals 3, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to integrate both sides with respect to t. So when I integrate the left-hand side with respect to t, I'm just going to get a times t plus some constant. Let's call it c1. And on the right-hand side, this will integrate to v. OK? Well, we know that initially... So when t is equal to 0, the velocity is going to be equal to u, because we're using u to represent the initial velocity. So we've got a times 0 plus c1 is equal to u. So c1 must be u. So we have a t plus u is equal to v, or v is equal to u plus a t. And that is one of our SUVAT equations. Now, we also know that V is equal to the rate at which the displacement is changing with respect to time. So V equals dS by dt. Now, we know that V is equal to U plus AT. So I can replace that on the left-hand side, like so. Now, I'm going to integrate both sides with respect to T. So u is just a constant. It's the uh, initial velocity. So we'll have u times t. This will integrate to 1 half at squared. And we'll have another constant of integration. Let's call it c2. And the right-hand side will just be s. Now, what do we know? Well, we know that initially the displacement is 0. So when t is 0, s is 0. So we'll have 0 plus 0 plus c2 must equal 0. So c2 must be equal to 0. So we've got that s is equal to ut plus 1 half a t squared. Now by rights, just using those two, we can manipulate them to um, find the other forms. So, if you wanted to work out uh, the, let's say, the s is equal to 1 half u plus v times t, okay, then what we're going to need to do is rearrange this one to get a equals and substitute it into that one. And that will allow us to rearrange it to get that form. If we want the s is equal to vt take away a half at squared, then rearrange this one to get u equals and substitute it into this one. OK, and then we can get that. And if we want the v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as, then we need to eliminate the t's. So I'm going to have to rearrange this one to get t equals, substitute it into that one, and then rearrange and get that one. So I, I can derive the other three just from those two. OK? But I'm going to show you an alternative way of getting to the v squared equals u squared plus 2as one, which is, you know, for interest's sake. So what we're going to do is we're going to return to this. So a was equal to dv by dt. Now, this is where some second year calculus is going to come in. And I'm going to use the chain rule. The chain rule says that I can write that as dv by ds times ds by dt. Now, the ds by dt is just v. 
So actually what I'm writing here is A is equal to dv by ds times v, or v dv by ds. So what I'll do is I will solve the differential equation by separation of variables. I'll multiply up both sides by the ds, keep the dv where it is, and then integrate both sides. Now, a here, remember, is a constant. So that integrates to just a times s. On the right-hand side, we're integrating v with respect to v. So we have 1 to the power, divide by the new power, we get 1 half v squared, and I'm going to get a constant of integration. Now, remember, we don't have a constant of integration on both sides, we just traditionally add it onto the right-hand side, so I'll call that c3. OK, so what do we know? Well, we know at this stage that when s is 0, so when the displacement is 0, we know that the velocity is the initial velocity. So the left-hand side will be 0. We'll have 1 half u squared plus c3. So that means that c3 must be minus 1 half u squared. So we've got a times s is equal to 1 half v squared, take away 1 half u squared, substituting back in there. We can multiply up by the 2. 2as is equal to v squared minus u squared. And then, getting ahead of myself, and then just rearrange it to the form we all know, v squared is u squared plus 2as. Okay, so there is a slightly alternative way of getting to the v squared equals u squared plus 2as formula.